Stefan Persson is without a doubt the richest man in Sweden. As reported by Forbes, Stefan Persson's current net worth as of 2022 is more than $30 billion. But how did he amass such a fortune? What's his story? Stefan Persson was born in Stockholm, Sweden on October 4, 1947. He graduated with an associate's degree from Stockholm University. He was then the CEO of the retail clothing store Hens & Moritz AB from 1982 to 1998. This is the company that his father, Erling Persson, started. In his first marriage, Persson had three children with Pamela Collette. He also has another wife, Nay Florman, with whom they reside in Stockholm, Sweden. But anyway, how did Persson become the Swedish wealthiest person? Persson's father, Erling Persson, taught his son the business of selling fashion by opening Hens, Hers, a woman's clothing store in Vastas, Sweden, in 1947. The company established itself as a mainstay of Swedish fashion after opening a store in Stockholm, and it then extended to other European countries. The business changed its name to H&M and started selling men's clothing after it acquired the Swedish hunting gear store Moritz Vidforce in 1968. In 1982, Stefan Persson took over the H&M clothing company from his father. Despite the firm going public in 1974, Persson was responsible for growing it into the global powerhouse it is today. But how did he develop and expand the company? H&M was the top clothing shop in Europe by the late 1990s. As it grew, H&M gained a reputation for rapid fashion, which it defined as cheap, in-demand, and generally appealing styles that were all initially produced by its own designers. Thanks to a network of suppliers in countries like Turkey, Bangladesh, and China, Stefan's ideas for mass-market clothes were easily transformed into clothing. Interestingly, the first H&M store debuted on Fifth Avenue in 2000, just across the street from the Rockefeller Center, and the event was preceded by a costly pre-launch advertising campaign. The company was giving an extra edge when it comes to fashion. The goal was to provide good value for customers' money. As we all know, Americans enjoy getting a good deal. Luckily, the campaign was successful since more people than could fit inside showed up for the opening. H&M did not alter garment designs for particular national or regional markets, because Persson recognized the business possibilities and cultural fascination with global fashion. And when H&M launched its first stores in the Middle East, in Kuwait and the United Arab Emirates, as well as in China, this strategy enabled the company to take advantage of economies of scale. In 2012, there were more than 40 countries with more than 2,500 H&M stores operating. House brands made up the majority of the brands sold by H&M. Still, Persson capitalized on celebrity appeal by securing design lines from celebrities like pop singers Kylie Minogue and Madonna, and fashion designers like Karl Lagerfeld, Stella McCartney, Matthew Williamson, Jimmy Choo, Versace, and Marnie. However, it was time for him to leave being the boss of the company. So, who succeeded him? In 2009, his son Karl Johan succeeded Persson as CEO and chairman in 2020. H&M had over 5,000 stores in his departure, spread over almost 75 nations. With clothing established in Hong Kong, Shanghai, Tokyo, Mexico City, Melbourne, and Mexico, just a few of the 3,400 locations worldwide, H&M is currently the second largest brand in Europe. Currently, he has nearly 50% of the empire's shares, and his sister holds 5%. By the way, to promote positive change and raise living conditions via education and the empowerment of women, he founded the H&M Foundation. H&M Foundation reports that since 2013, the foundation has given away about $20 million. In addition to H&M, Stefan Persson holds sizable investments in several other businesses. That's the likes of Puglia, Ericsson, Nordia, and Hexagon. Now, you might be wondering, how does he store all of his wealth? What does he invest in? What other ventures is he into? Investing in real estate. Well, he's the owner of a real estate and leasing business in Ramsbury. He oversees a sizable property portfolio around Europe through the company, focusing on London, Stockholm, and Paris. Interestingly, he paid 25 million pounds in 2009 to purchase an entire community in the United Kingdom. 
It's a 19,000-acre property named the Ramsbury Estates. It contains excellent areas for hunting, shooting, and fishing. Moreover, he paid £400 million through Ramsbury Property in 2016 to acquire Devonim Flight Ship Stores in London. This is one of the priciest acquisitions in the capital since 2008, with an expected annual return of 2.75%. Basically, Stefan has become one of the wealthiest individuals in Sweden. But wait a minute, what does he spend on? What kind of a lifestyle does he have? Like most Swedish billionaires, Stefan is not particularly interested in living a life of luxury. His private aviation habits and car collections are rarely made public. The 74-year-old billionaire, though, resides in Stockholm, Sweden's capital. He doesn't simply live in a little penthouse apartment downtown. Rather, he owns a stunning mansion, which you could probably tell is Swedish even if you only saw a picture of it. The house is made up entirely of pointed triangles with intriguing brickwork. In Sweden, this is a thing. The residence is situated on a sizable plot of land that contains many gardens, walkways, and fountains. Without gardens, walkways, and fountains, all that acreage would be for nothing. Nevertheless, just like an ordinary human being, he has hobbies that he enjoys. Well, person enjoys playing tennis, golf, and skiing on the slopes. Well, he seems quite ambitious and enjoyable on the field. He's just the perfect role model for his kids. By the way, his other two children, Person and Charlotte Söderström, are both billionaires. Anyway, what did you like the most about him? How has he inspired you?